you, Jesus. My name is Estelle Humphrey. I'm the visionary for Poetry Justice for God Ministry. We want to welcome you to Poetry Justice for God blog interviews. We have a guest today. Her name is Renee Drummond Brown. Say hi, Renee. Hi. Thanks for having me here. Amen. And my co-host today is Miss Rosie. Hello, everybody. So, Renee, you've been a poet for how long? Can we talk about how long? How many years? Is it lifestyle for you? Amen. Amen. It is a lifestyle for me. And, and I'm going to say when Rosie and I went to school back in the day, um, I always didn't get fair treated in some fair treatment in some of those classrooms. So I think I was a poet there. I think I started going off into my own land <laughs> with, from listening to Dick and Jane and Spot and Go Run and this and that. I had poetry in my head. I'm going to say early as five years of age. But I'm kind of a shy child. I didn't share uh, my poetic works with anyone. You have a new project out called Paper Dolls. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Actually, I published a book uh, yesterday. It was Me, Myself, and I Poems by Renee Drummond Brown. But Paper Dolls is one of my newer pro projects as well. And that book was written for... Uh, women and children who live in abusive situations and men and men because they can be victims too of domestic violence and um, violence in the home. So this book just um, encompasses just a, a, a variety of, I'll say a potpourri of different things that go on in the home during the days and weeks that it is um, present. Looking at your book that I'm in love with, Bridge Over Troubled Waters. Yes, yes. So you, so you, you mentioned that era that you grew up in. Your era was the sacrifice for my era to be able to go to school, segregation, to be able to go to school with the Caucasian children. Yes. As I call and it was a blessing. You was that sacrifice. And you experienced, even in that era, the difference between the two water fountains back in the South, the black and the whites, the water fountain, and how dirty the water fountains for the black people was. You experienced in that. And you was our sacrifice. So when we were able to go to school and become more educated, it was a little bit more freedom. Brown versus the um, Board of Education helped as well. So looking at this book, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, my God, it's just a genre of um, empowerment, educating, and you know, dealing with crime, black crimes. I wanna speak on one of the poems, Black Crimes Matter. It's a movement to me, and I know you wrote it a while back, but Wildfire Publication Magazine did an article. You published, published this poem in that magazine. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind that. Well, Black Crimes Matter was written because I had a heavy heart um, with a lot of our youth, uh, with our Black on Black crimes in our uh, Black communities, and, and just youth, period, but mainly our Black youth um, in the crimes. Um, I have a little funny story, though, about this poem. Uh, my daughter, uh, Dr. Renee Brown, was the director of a hometown youth camp. And I thought, great, I'll go to her job with her one day and get some of her counselors to do the double dutch jump rope. Mm -hmm. And I would read the poem and keep moving back and forth as if I'm getting ready for my turn to jump in. So I got through the poem and at the very last line, a little knack flew on my hand and I hit it and it messed up, of course, the whole video of the poem. So the girls got started again with the rope. So as I said, this poem was black on black crime. So it was really relating to a black child being murdered in the streets and our call for justice, do we march? I asked the question at the end, or do we turn our heads at this time when it's our crime, our stuff? Well, when we got ready to take the second take of the video, a uh, little Caucasian young lady, she was my daughter, worked for my daughter. She jumped in the video and said, oh, I'll be the child lay on the ground and I'll be the dead child. <laughs> 
that changed the whole trajectory of this home. So it was done. We posted it. And a lot, a lot of great reviews. People love the diversity of it with, with this child being there laying on the ground. But I do plan to do that, the poem again with an African-American child laying there on the ground, shot dead, you know, while playing in the middle of the streets with a double judge. Amen, amen. One of my favorite poems that was written because a lot of people don't understand what wet nurses is. Oh, my man. grandmother was one. And American was raised on my breast. Yes. Tell us the inspiration behind that. Well, America was raised on my breast. I wanted to just uh, pay homage to those wet nurse slaves who um, they worked the fields, went in the home at the or their plantation, I'd say at the end of the night, and still had to breastfeed those children. Uh, when I think about breastfeeding, we are all wet nurse, Rosie, myself, because we all, whether we raise someone physically or not on our breast, we raised a whole community of children. That's what black women do. I remember my mother working um, outside the home, inside the home, but she always had children that she raised in the whole community. So I, growing up with that, seeing that, that's what I did with the children of the community, uh, of the, my, my children's friends and things. They came into my home and I reared and raised them. So I looked at myself as a wet nurse slave not off of the physical breast, but yes, I am that slave also. You remind me of one of my inspiration, um, Gwendolyn Brooks, who was the first African-American woman who won the Pulitzer Prize back in 1950, and how she encouraged and the Black people to go stay in school, be cool and stay in school. Yes. That meant so much to me when I was coming up in school. You remind me of her. Mm. and. Um, well, James Weldon Johnson is another one, one of my inspirations, the creation. I just want to know who inspired you to be a poet? Florence Dunbar, who Dr. Maya Angelou wrote a lot of her work behind him. And I wrote a lot of my work behind the both of them. Um, also, I am diverse in my reading of poetry. Um, Going to Chatham University, I read uh, Anne uh, Sexton's work. I read Sylvia Plath, um, Allen Ginsberg, one of the beatnik poets. Um, I, I just like all poetry. I like all poetry. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> so, uh, but but I, I have to say, Dr. Maya Angelou, one of my signature poems. Um, is still I write, and it's the answer to still I rise. Amen, amen. Um, your work is on Amazon.com. You have gotten tons of reviews, so I just want to read one. Um, Once I was lost, but now I'm found. One uplifting aspect I found in, in the reading of the echoes of the church in the lives of the early Black settlers and the reference to the singing in the field and thereby the formation of gospel choirs and all the great, great singers who have been winged there and all the great, great music that have given us all. You have so many reviews, so many people love you and you need to teach people how to get their product on Amazon and how to network and how to yeah, market their product. Cause you have, I mean, I got pages of just reviews that you have sent me. So it's so amazing. What would you leave leave for the poets that's out there that's trying to get started? What what inspirational word do you have for them? I think Habakkuk 2-2, write the vision and make it plain so that they run to tables to read it. I write the vision and I make it plain. So when we think of the word of God, he wrote that Bible for uh, a, a fifth grader to read, and yet it's so scholarly that they can't figure out that word. So I think just writing the vision and making it plain so everybody can read your work. It's as simple Amen. as that. Amen. Ms. Roses, do you have any questions for her? I have a few. I'm we nervous. 
<laughs> don't be, please don't be. Renee, it's a pleasure meeting you. Um, it was a pleasure reading your poetry. I am a drama queen myself. So um, I was feeling your poetry. What was your major in school, in, in, in college? What was your major? Well, um, I received an associate's degree in Christian ministry from uh, the Center for Urban Biblical Ministry, uh, Geneva College. I received my bachelor's in Christian ministry leadership with a minor in biblical theology studies. Wow. And then I received my master's from Chatham University in creative writing, literature, with a specialization genre in poetry. Okay, I could, I could feel that. That's why I was wondering where, where all this came from. My major was English, my minor was theater. So <laughs> that was my first degree, I've got several, but yeah, so I understand. So I was trying to figure out how did she do this? And this is also a gift. So yeah. you were combining your, your college, your education with your gift, because I don't think anybody could just learn how to be a poet, learn how to write. I loved your, um, your two poems, uh, Dare, How Dare You, huh. which is like a, which is like an attitude poem because that's my attitude. How dare you? And the other, um, X marks the spot. Mm. They both remind me of poems that, that, um, that may have been written during the 60s because these are things or how we felt during the 60s. Mm -hmm. Have you ever performed your poetry or these poems especially? Have you ever performed these two poems or considered doing a video? I've done a video. X marks the spot is on my Facebook page. I've okay. also read that uh, one of my professors invited me to Whitewell Bookstore and my daughter, Dr. Renee Brown, videoed that there. So that poem is actually on video also. And I'll post it, repost it on my Facebook page so that you can actually see those poems. Thank you. Thank you. Because I, I can see those. I can see them. I, great. I'm glad you did that. Um, have you considered putting your writing to music? Or, or putting it to another genre, like a, a, a play or something? I have. Uh, I've been praying a lot about that lately. Uh, I have some irons in the fire, I'll say. But um, I, I like to uh, um, perfect, if you will, no one's perfect about anything, but my craft. And so I'd like to uh, learn a little bit more before I kind of go out in the deep of doing something like that. Um, I thought about like even a novel, but maybe some short stories, you know, individual stories um, before I go into a full blown novel. Um, I'm one like that. I like to sit back, like to analyze and, and see kind of people's thoughts and what I need to do to perfect it or to get better at what I'm doing. So maybe I'll do like a short story book and start there, but I would like a play. Yes. Okay. A play and then a movie. Okay. Um, <laughs> hint, hint. Well, th those are those are my my questions. I can't think of anything else I'd I'd like to ask at this time, but I will definitely be getting in touch with you. Oh yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Renee Drummond Brown to her family that was actually online with us. The first time having visitors online with us when we're doing our interviews. I want to thank her family for joining us as well, and just want to say God bless you, Renee. We always close with a prayer. Before we close, I'd like to just, can I do a poem for you? Yes. A short one. I'd like to do. Thank you. Um, That's so nice. Mm -hmm. This poem is related to the shoe. We think of the shoe. And it's titled, All God's Children Ain't Got Heavy Shoes. God placed his heavy weight in my shoes. Therefore, my feet and I shall not be moved or complain. The eyelids of my shoes remind me to watch, fight, and pray. The tongue of my shoe is but a two-edged sword, speaks volume, cuts going in, and coming out for sure. My shoe's soul reminds me to love the Lord God with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my soul. The shoe's heel reminds me to not see 
the plagues that surround me, nor the valley lows or mountaintops before me, but rather to look to the hills from which my help comes, which is the Father God within me. The two tied loops lacing my shoes touts a knot and is but a threefold cord. The cord represents a noose and the knot reminds me that I wear some heavy shoes for show. Oh, God's children ain't got heavy shoes. I wear size slavery. What size you wear? Mm, 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 mm. Well, 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 yes. The court has spoken in the name of Jesus. Write the vision and make it plain in the mighty name of Jesus. All right now. So, hallelujah. I want to say thank you again, Renee Drummond Brown. It's a blessing and truly honor and privilege to be before you. I just want to close with a prayer. Hallelujah, Father God. Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this mighty woman of God. Thank we you, thank Lord. you for her children that was planted before us, Father God. We ask that you continue to anoint her from the top of her head to the tips of her toes. Anoint her mind, body, and soul, where it continue to yes. mind the word of God. Write the vision and make it plain, the book of Habakkuk, Father God. Give us strength and encouragement, Father God. Allow her vision to go to the masses, Father God. Globally, Father God, let the people be uplifted, educated, empowered through the Holy Ghost. We ask in these many blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.